Trading performance is really an inside job. Success in trading comes from making good decisions at the right times. Good decisions at the right times come from a well-trained mind. Since 2005, John Locke has continuously trained his mind by studying extensively with titans in the coaching and neurolinguistic programming fields to gain some of the highest level of training and credentials available in those industries. This extensive training, coupled with his many years of being a professional trader and strategy developer, gives him an edge to help traders effectively train their minds and maximize the effectiveness of their trading strategies. Let's start right now to train your mind for ultimate trading success. Hello, everyone. My name is John Locke, and you're listening to the Trading Performance Podcast, episode number one. Since this is the first episode, I'm going to take a moment to tell you a little bit about myself and about our company. I run a company called LockInYourSuccess.com, where we help traders achieve the absolute best performance they can. Now, we primarily work with what's called income traders, where we make money in market-neutral positions. However, we also help directional traders, retail traders, professional traders, hedge fund managers, and mentors from other trading companies as well. Now, Locking Your Success started out about 15 years ago. We started out as a life and a success coaching company. And while I was success coaching, I took an interest in trading. And I happened to become very good at it. And traders started asking me for help. And back around 2007, 2008, we converted over to primarily helping traders achieve better returns in the market. Now, I have a coaching NLP and hypnosis background. I'm a certified strategic intervention coach, certified transformational coach, a master certified NLP instructor. And NLP stands for Neuro Linguistic Programming, for those of you who may not be familiar with it. And I'm also a master hypnotist. And in addition to that, I've been retail trading since 2006. We've developed many fantastic market neutral strategies. I hold live seminars on trading and trading performance and trading psychology. And it is my passion in life to help people live happier, more productive lives. And I really enjoy doing that through helping them with their finances, more specifically with trading. So let's just talk about the content that I'd like to discuss in the podcast. So we're going to have a couple primary focus areas. And the first one is going to be called the dynamics of you. In other words, who do you have to be as a trader to perform the absolute best you can within the markets? And to do this, we're going to be talking about areas like trading performance psychology. We'll take a look at the expectations of the average trader and maybe in helping you investigate what your expectations are as a revolve around trading. We'll take a look at feelings your behaviors, your expectations, your biases. We'll talk about the quality decision-making processes, and we'll take a look at you know how to make the absolute best decisions depending on the utility of the bet that you're taking when we're trading. We're going to take a look at the risk-reward probability equation, talk about how to take away the proper lessons from trading and from backtesting. You know, one of the big challenges that a lot of traders tend to have is they do all this back testing and they take the improper lessons away from that back testing. They don't understand a lot of times how to do it properly. Some people will run an automated test, some people will run a manual test, but one run of a test doesn't really tell you a whole lot. Because there's a lot of timing variations and market condition shifts and so forth that happen in the marketplace. And you take any one rule set and you run it, you don't always get the whole picture. There's a lot of timing anomalies involved in that picture and you need to understand the consequences of those anomalies prior to putting that system live if you want to have the right expectations for that strategy. And also from live trading as well, a lot of traders will come in and you know they'll start trading a system. And a lot of times they won't even follow the system. And then they'll look at the results and they'll assume that system is good or bad based on short-term results, which generally isn't going to be very beneficial to anybody. So we want to make sure we properly interpret our results when we're trading. And we do that through a journaling and a review process. Speaking of the journaling and review process, we always want to make continuous improvements as a trader. And again, that goes back to properly analyzing your back testing, properly analyzing your actual trading, taking away the right lessons, and then utilizing those going forward. 
We'll also look at doing some maybe behavioral case studies. We'll talk about some actual challenges that some of our real traders have and how they've overcome them and maybe why those they had those challenges in the first place. And we'll also talk about some really good books as it relates to trading. Now, an interesting thing about books is because I deal mainly with traders, they're always looking for trading books and trading strategy books and, and things like that. And the reality is I don't look at that many trading books. I certainly do look at trading books. I review trading books. There are some very good ones out there. But I find the majority of challenges that most, pe most people have are better addressed through success and psychology principles that relate to anything, including sports, including gambling, and other things like that. Because the reality is the principles of success are the same, regardless of what high-performance sport or activity or gambling or trading you happen to be doing. And if you can get those elements together, not only can you have success in trading, but you'll be able to have success in pretty much anything that you do. And that's our goal for you. The other thing we're going to be talking about are the dynamics of trading. A lot of people come into the trading business looking for a strategy or a trade or, or just a tool to do something. And they think if they take a hold of that tool, they trade that strategy or whatever, they'll be able to handle anything that the market has to throw at them. And unfortunately, it's this attitude and this expectation that they are going to find this holy grail magical trade that usually keeps people from becoming successful long-term as a trader. Now, you can experience temporary success with any, almost any strategy if you happen to be trading that strategy at the right time and you happen to hit the right market conditions. You know, I talk to traders who come to me and they say, oh, I want to be a full-time trader. And I say, well, what are you trading and what's your performance been like thus far? And they'll tell me something like, well, I'm doing this strategy where I... You know, I trade, basically trade the market long or, or I trade directionally and, and I'm long in the market all the time. And, you know, look, over the last five years, I've had this fantastic performance. And I say, well, that's wonderful. I'm glad you've had great performance, but what are you going to do when this stops working? And they look at like me like I have two heads. What do you mean? Well... You've been trading a strategy that primarily takes advantage of a bullish market for the last five years, and we've had a bullish market for the last five years. What are you going to do when we go into a sideways or a down market and that strategy no longer works? And it seems a lot of times they just can't comprehend that that strategy wouldn't work because it's worked so well over the last five years. But if they truly understood the reason the strategy was working and how that strategy applied to the market and the fact that the market is not going to be the same forever, then they'd realize that that strategy is not going to work at some point, which is perfectly fine if you're an amateur and you're just kind of throwing trades at the market and, hey, the thing stops working, no big deal. But when you decide to quit your job and go out and trade full time, you better damn well know that that strategy is not going to be working all the time. The market's going to change, something's going to shift, and that's not going to work. What really has to happen is you have to understand the strategy, you have to understand that strategy's strength and its weaknesses, why it works in the marketplace, and, know, and basically know when to use it. I use this strategy when the market's like this. If the market's like that, well, I know this strategy is not going to work out well, and I have some sort of a backup strategy that is going to work well in that marketplace. And I can identify those conditions, and then I can apply that strategy and abandon this one temporarily. My point being that you're taking a strategy, you understand that it has its strengths and its weaknesses, and it's not going to work all the time, and decide that when that strategy doesn't work, am I just going to trade through it? Let the drawdowns be drawdowns, wait for the market to come back in line with my strategy, or am I going to be able to observe the market, understand when it's probably no longer a good fit for my strategy, switch my strategy to a to switch to something that is good for the current marketplace for as long as that works well. Okay, so this is all about understanding the characteristics of trading strategy. We're also going to determine where uh, the primary failure risk is in, is, is in any strategy. Now, we have strategies. If you're uh, in a, a, what we call an income trader, we have strategies that win 80, 85, 90, uh, or, or even possibly as high as 95% of the time. Just because a, a strategy wins 95% of the time, or maybe even more, does not make that a good strategy. We have other things to consider rather than just win probabilities. 
like what's your loss scenario compared to your win scenario? In other words, how much do you lose when you lose? How much could you possibly lose? What's your average loss? How much do you win can you win? I've seen strategies that win 95% of the time. They're essentially bad strategies. I mean, these things might win for a year, two years, three years, four years, but eventually they're gonna, they're gonna, you're gonna blow up trading those strategies. And on the other hand, I've seen strategies that win maybe 20% of the time that are fantastic strategies. And the chances of you, as long as you're position sizing properly, the chances of you blowing out would be extremely small. So there's a lot of dynamics to look into when we're looking at trading strategies if we want to be long-term successful. We don't want to just go for the frequency of wins. And we're also going to look at uh, proper backtesting procedures, especially as it pertains to income strategies. We'll be looking at the consequences that position sizing, scaling, and changing profit targets and maximum loss numbers have on long-term success. We'll also be looking at the trading business as well, and you'll be looking at uh, accounting and position sizing and you know, how much backup capital you have and, and how your cash flow can run in a trading business. And lastly, we'll be looking at how to get ourselves to interact with the dynamics of trading in a way that produces the most consistent, profitable results. So lots of great things that we'll be talking about in the podcast. So let's just take a few moments to talk about a book that I recently read called The Elements of Success. That's The Elements of Success by Keith Raymond. This is a book that's hard to find. It's not a book that's marketed or geared specifically towards trading, but it is an awesome book about what it takes to be successful. And i just like to talk about a few quotes from that book and maybe some reflections that I've had. And one of them is that there is no lasting success without self-discipline. You know, one of the things we do when we train our traders in our groups is we talk a lot about uh, self-discipline. And that's because our goal is to get traders to be successful. You know, you go to a lot of places where, as it revolves around trading and they try to uh, they try to push a trade down your throat or some sort of a strategy or they want you to follow them, their trade alert services or or something like that. And we've even seen the psychology hook now around that. In other words, I've seen a lot of uh, webinars and so forth that say, hey, follow, uh, do this webinar on trading psychology and they give you a few psychology tips and then they try and get you into their uh, signed into their trading service. And I see that as as sad. Now, of course, to trade well, I mean, you have to have some sort of a strategy. It can be a subjective strategy. It can be a non-subjective strategy. You have to have some sort of a strategy for sure. But my point being, strategies are a dime a dozen. And once you've learned the mechanics of trading and you actually understand what the heck you're doing, if at that point you're not performing at a profitable level and you're not doing well, chances are another strategy is not going to help you perform better. What's more likely to help you to perform better is actually uh, building discipline. Because even if you have the best strategy in the world, if you don't have the discipline to follow it, then it's not going to do you any good. You, know, you can set up the best trading plan or whatever, but you have to follow it. This being the case, we really focus on that. And we try to tra take traders through stages. So we have stage one where we learn the mechanics of our trades. We have stage two where we actually start applying those mechanics a little bit. And then we go into stage three where we learn a little bit more mechanics, but then we just solely focus on discipline. Just follow the plan, follow the plan, follow the plan. Do what you say you're going to do. Have integrity with yourself. Build that integrity level because if you don't build that integrity level, it's going to come back at you later when you're trading a lot more money and it's going to be problematic for you. So we really, really focus on that. And then once that integrity level is built, and you have the basic skills, and now you can follow yourself, then we really propel you up into being a fantastic trader. So self-discipline is extremely important. The other thing it says here is, is it's, it is not enough to know how to do something. One must do it. So as a society, we've essentially become a group of people who tend to consume information, and there's so much information out there to consume. As a matter of fact, it's overwhelming the amount of information there is to consume. But the problem is, you know, we learn maybe a little bit about something when we consume information, but we have to actually get out there and apply it. So somebody will take information and maybe they'll start to apply it a little bit, but as soon as they run into some sort of a roadblock or anything, they run out and try and get more information again. And they, they never really mastered the very first piece of information they got. 
So we end up with people who, from a book smarts level, know all kinds of things, but at a practical level, they can't do anything. You know, it's like trying to learn how to ride a unicycle by reading a book. So you get up on the unicycle and you fall down, and you go get another book about riding a unicycle. And you and you learn more, and you get on the unicycle, and you fall down, you go out and get another book, and you learn some more, and you get on the unicycle, you, you go fall down. I don't care how many times you go through that cycle, you're not, you're not going to be able to learn how to u- ride a unicycle till you get on that sucker and you start balancing it and you practice, 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 practice. And you don't need to learn, you know, be reading books about how to do a fancy trick on a unicycle if you can't even balance on the thing and drive it across a flat floor. And that's what people are doing with trading, right? They come in and they, they'll take in some information, they'll, they'll try it a little bit, and they'll run into a bit of a rocky period and they'll go out and get more information. And they'll do that over and over again rather than coming in and zoning in on the actual uh, things that are going to make them profitable as a trader. All right, so that's very important there as well. And the last one I'd just like to talk to you before we just kind of close up here is in order to win, we have to conceive and believe of success or its possibility. In order to succeed as a trader or in anything, you have to have a belief that you're able to succeed. So it's very important to always stay optimistic. That's what that means to me. And this doesn't mean being overly optimistic to the point where you're irrational, but being optimistic that it's possible or believe it's a possibility is absolutely essential. Because one of the things with trading is that you have to recognize that trading is what we call a dance of chance, meaning that you can do all the right things and lose, and you can do all the wrong things and win. Which means just because you maybe took a loss on a trade doesn't mean you did anything wrong. And if you take the wrong lesson away from that, that can be really problematic. So you need to be willing to learn. You need to be willing to apply You need to have the discipline to do the right things. You have to believe it's possible and then recognize it's a dance of chance and be freely willing to accept either outcome. Keep probabilities in your favor. Do the right things. If you win, you win. You lose, you lose. If you keep doing the right things, you keep making the right decisions. Eventually, in the long term, you will be a winner. So that's what I have for today. If you found the podcast helpful, please recommend it to a friend. And we'll see you in episode number two. Hey, if you enjoyed listening to this podcast, you have to check out my trading performance membership, where we take all this material to the next level. We study it and we apply it to bring our trading performance to peak levels. Simply go to tradingperformancepodcast.com, that's one word, tradingperformancepodcast.com, to receive information on how you too can become involved and improve your trading. I look forward to seeing you there.